saw somebody post something earlier this week on Twitter, and it outlined the weekly wrestling television schedule. And you got people talking about injecting into my veins and in my arse. Oh, All this wrestling, so many options, so many choices, and it's awesome. And I would agree in theory that you have choices, you have variety, you have options, which can potentially be really good for the wrestling business, for the wrestlers. Competition always brings the best out of people or the worst out of people. But if a wrestler's not happy one place, they could potentially go somewhere else and still be able to apply their craft and earn, excuse me, a very decent living. So that in and of itself is a good thing. And for those of you that have been waiting for other options, you've got plenty of other options out there. You've got the AEW show that's going to be coming on Wednesday night. You've got NXT coming on to Wednesday night as well. You've got Impact moving to Access TV going to Tuesday night. <clears throat> You've got Raw on Monday. You've got SmackDown on Friday. You've got New Japan and I think WoW on Saturday. So there are options, plenty of choices, lots of variety in theory. And as a result, that can be a very good place to be as a wrestling fan because you don't have to stick with one if you don't really like one. And that is absolutely true. If you don't like what's going on on Raw or SmackDown or AEW or NXT, there's plenty of other options out there. Go find them. <clears throat> and I totally agree with that assertion. That's a good thing from a fan standpoint. Also a good thing from a talent standpoint. But where we've already talked before about how WWE was oversaturating the marketplace just themselves, and WWE was putting out there too much product. And how do you maintain with a three-hour Raw and NXT, a two-hour SmackDown, and then you're talking about pay-per-views and other network specials. Like, just that one company alone, if you actually try to keep up, it's just too damn much. And then you throw everything else in the mix. I didn't even mention ROH and their weekly syndicated garbage-looking show. You got AEW coming down the pike. You've got... Impact still exists. You've got Wild wow, New Japan. You've got all these other choices, all these other options. And, and it begs the question to me, legitimately so, is there too much wrestling on TV? Now, for those of you that are going to say, well, if you don't want to watch, then don't watch. If you don't like something, then don't watch it. Okay, fine. Yeah, I'm not disputing that. But again, let's try and put on the listening ears here for a minute. And kind of hear me out in what I'm talking about here in a grander scheme, in a larger context. Because I do think it is a viable, essential question to ask. Are there too many options? Is there too much wrestling on TV? And a major part of the concern for me is that there is an overall oversaturation of the marketplace of product without the customer base in demand to provide the long-term support for that level of infrastructure. Like if you go back to the 90s, and we always go back to the 90s, when you look at when wrestling was its absolute hottest, you would have Raw on Monday nights and Nitro on Monday nights head-to-head -head against each other. You had Night, excuse me, Thunder and SmackDown on Thursday nights head-to-head -head against each other. Then you would have ECW on TNN on Friday nights, and then you would have your sort of pay-per-views, what have you. And sure, you could say, well, you'd have Heat, and you'd have Shotgun Saturday night. Well, those are one-hour, gimmicky type of shows. They were recap shows as much as anything else, so let's keep it real here. But in terms of true fundamental wrestling from those three big companies at the time, and again, that's a key phrase there, at that time, when the business was arguably as hot as it ever had been, you had three major national brands with a wrestling fan base that was far more diverse, far larger in its scope and size, and far more interested in terms of its passion level. And even then, eventually, the business of wrestling could not support three major national brands, and you eventually ended up with one, the WWE. 
ECW failed, ultimately. Sorry, it did. WCW failed, ultimately. They had their financial issues. They had all this other stuff. So even when the business was as white hot as it was at the time, you had so many more millions of people watching to the point where Monday night was not Monday night football time. It was professional wrestling time. And Monday night football damn near ceased to be as it was constructed at the time because wrestling was eating into its market share so much to where they were doing all types of stupid experiments and crap with the commentary teams and stuff, just trying to do anything with Monday Night Football to shake stuff up. Here was wrestling, kicking ass and taking names. Everybody throughout television wondering what's going on here. This is so hot. You got six million people watching this show and four and a half, five million people watching this show. And then you go a the couple nights later, you got a few million people split between those two shows. And even ECW, who was clearly third string at that point, was drawing a little over a million viewers a week. They were drawing impact numbers from five, six years ago, 20 years ago, when you had two other major brands that were generating way more interest in viewership and revenue. So they call it speaking. But now all of a sudden, when the business overall is not nearly as hot, not nearly as diverse, not nearly as wide and deep in terms of its scope, its appeal, its reach, and overall fan base, we're talking about a Monday night three-hour show, a Tuesday night two-hour show, two two-hour Wednesday night shows, a Friday night show that I think is two hours, probably eventually goes to three maybe, and then a couple of shows on Saturday to boot. Not to mention the other assorted pay-per-views from these different companies. Damn it all, something is going to have to give here. Because either A, you're going to have fans that actually try to watch as much of this wrestling as they possibly can, and eventually it's going to burn them the hell out. Or B, fans are going to have to make conscientious choices and say, there is too much damn wrestling to watch. Ultimately, what's going to happen is I can only put my time behind this product, this show, this product, and the rest of them, unfortunately, I'm going to have to do the best I can to keep up. Or three, these companies are all going to vulture each other and hurt each other negatively, and there are going to be some really dire, drastic consequences. Now, you're going to have those that sit there and say, well, when New Japan does a big show here, they draw a big audience. When AEW's done their pay-per-views, they've drawn decent audiences and they've done good pay-per-view numbers and so on and so forth. But those are spot shows and one-off type of things. Those are not consistent weekly television programs. Those are not consistent weekly products. And Vince putting NXT on USA Network for two hours to appease USA and make himself a little more money to try and negatively impact AEW isn't helping things either. You look at the viewership numbers for NXT on a Wednesday night. A little over 1.1 million viewers from what I understand. Okay, that, that's an adequate rating for a Wednesday night primetime wrestling show, especially when it doesn't have big featured names. But now you're going to have AEW go up against it. So either A, you're going to sit there and prove our ratings numbers are bullshit because both of them draw over a million viewers. Or B, you're going to have AEW take away a few hundred thousand NXT viewers, bring a couple of hundred thousand of their own, and you got two shows doing 800,000 viewers in prime time on two major cable networks in TNT and USA, and nobody's going to be happy. Or C, you're going to have... The audience clearly decides one show is favored over the other, and the other brand, other show, is going to die. There just is not the fan base to support all of this long term. There just isn't. You could say, well, there's clearly a demand. No, there isn't. Because you can look at Raw and SmackDown ratings as a gauge, as a measure of what the overall appetite for professional wrestling is. And you could say, well, they've run away a lot of fans. Well, I'm going to tell you what, that might be true, but I don't see any of these other brands that are going to be able to do anything to bring back those fans that have been turned away by WWE over the years. And I don't see where they're doing anything that is going to draw in a new generation of wrestling fans by the droves. They don't have that formula, ding dong, dumb dicks. That's not happening. That's not happening. And, and that's what worries me and concerns me about this. Even if somebody's going to say, well, AEW has their own established fan base. Those are the hardest of hardcore types of serious fans 
like us, they're going to be there no matter what. But at some point in time, you have to be able to grow and branch out beyond that. And even like WWE with SmackDown, like even this talk about trying to make them a more sports-based type of product, to me is ridiculous. Because when professional wrestling is its best, when professional wrestling is its hottest, it's got characters and stories that you can believe in and get invested in. It's got larger-than-life stars. That doesn't come from the athletics in the ring. The ring work is a component of it. It is a piece of telling the story. It is not the story. So all you're doing now, potentially, is going to SmackDown on Fox, reaching even more millions of households with a product that is not matching the reality of the times, with a product that is not going to appeal to the masses nearly like you want it to. That's why they're having to bring in Austin and this guy and that guy and all these other guys for their premiere show, try to sucker everybody in and hopefully you can figure out a way to make them stay. This is not good. You're going to fatigue your damn audience. Fans eventually are going to have to choose, which means some of these companies are going to die. There just is not the appetite for it. There just is not the level of passion for it. There just is not enough of a lot to support these many wrestling shows every single week. You could say I'm being negative because I am, because I'm giving you some truth talk. A little reality check here. There's a reason back in the day you didn't have big major companies in wrestling doing shows every single night when you had the Monday Night Wars and everything was hot with WWF, WCW, and even ECW. Because there wasn't the marketplace to demand it. There wasn't the marketplace to support it. Well, if you didn't have it 20 damn years ago, what the hell makes you think you got it now? getting into a really dangerous place here. You're going to create a bubble. And it's not even a bubble because of fan interest. It's going to be a bubble of mediocrity due to everybody being worn out, freaking fatigued, and flat out done with wrestling as the way it is. If you are going to present this much wrestling, and this goes to every single company, I don't care who the hell it is because they are all guilty of this. If you are going to present it as a ring-based product, and that is primarily all that you're offering, then all of your products are doomed to fail. All of your products are going to suffer in the long term. No matter how many hardcore fans come into the comments of this video and disagree with me, no matter how many hardcore fans sit there and go to social media and the interwebs and say that I'm wrong, the reality is I'm not. Just don't be surprised in two years or so I'm coming back and saying, ha ha, I told you so. This can't sustain. This can't last. It's going to be incumbent upon fans, frankly, to help weed that out eventually. Between AEW and NXT on Wednesday night, you're going to have to choose one. If you're going to watch WWE, even if it's spaced out Monday and Friday, you may have to ultimately choose one. This is not sustainable, and it will not last, I promise you. And that will be a really bad thing for professional wrestling.